Turn of Mobile Camp Records. Mobile Joke takes us on a journey with him and Four Shop about how the label got started way back. So you already know these legends. I'm Mobile Joe. I'm the one who bought the Ruthless Juvenile Doghouse Posse. I've been in this game now. I'm gonna live it over 25 years. And um, I've been back for the last couple of years, been working on getting back in this game. I'm working on a new project. I got some new stuff coming. And I'm just doing what I do and what I love to do. And that's what I do. Man, I started out with Ruthless Juvenile, lower level organization, Doghouse Posse. I done work with Ricky B, Cheeky Black. I done work with Lil Goldie. I don't work with a whole lot of artists, you know? A lot of them. It started really with me and um, Ace Nitty with the lower level. That was my first artist. And um, we grew up together. And um, man, I was just out there, you know, living in the streets, doing my thing. And um, when I wanted to do something different and try to turn my life around and do something positive, you know, and um, I found that he was rapping. I sat down, I had a talk with him. And from there on, we just started recording music and you know, going on, and that just led from one thing to the next thing, and got me where I'm at today. But like I say, it was just the idea of I had, and I wanted to do something different, and I believe I can do it just watching the industry that was going on with the NWA and, you know, Ghetto Boys and all that. You know, I was already living that life, and I had money, and I wanted to do something, you know, different than what I was doing. Man. Well, first, first, let me give my, give me, let me, Shout out my boy again, cause without him, I probably don't even be alive today. Something like, I owe this man here so much. This is like, you know, they, you be hearing a lot of people saying real, this my, he's real people. This is real people right here. I'm like, he didn't know me from a hole in the wall. You know what I'm saying? I was on the street wilding. He took me into his house, you know what I'm saying? And you know, and later, you know, make yourself at home. You ain't gonna find nobody that, you know, they're doing no things like that. You know what I'm saying? So I owe this man here a lot. I'm not talking about this man done a lot for me. When I went to the pen and he went to the feds, me and him still was, you know, corresponding. He was telling his his girl to send me money that he didn't have to me. But I was, you know what I'm saying? So I got this dude here. This I owe this man a lot. I love this dude. But looking back at the project, the Rulers Do Not Project. I didn't tell you the truth, I didn't really think it was gonna blow like it did. You know, we did, basically I was just doing this to put the West Bank on the map. You know what I'm saying? Cause at the time when Bounce was at its peak, you ain't hear too many people from the West Bank, you know, rapping besides Tim Smooth and Bust Down and it was like, you know, late 80s, you know what I'm saying? So we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't like really on a map, on a map. So we just did the album just to put the West Bank on the map and it really blowed up. It put New Orleans on a map bigger than, you know what I'm saying, what it was at the time, because at the time you didn't have your soldiers and your juveniles. You had them, but there was more folks going on the bounce. Yeah, we, we was in the studio. We was, you know, doing another song, I forget. It was supposed to be on a second, on a second disc. But anyway, Mo came in there, shut it down. He was like, hey, man, we got to do a bounce song. I was totally against it. No way, hold, no indeed, but Lil Badness, you know, free Lil Badness, got to give a shout out to him. He really was the one that pushed me to do it. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't want to do it. I wasn't no bounce rapper. You know what I'm saying? So we did the bounce rap thing, and it really, opened the door for the Rootless Juvenile uh, album to do what it did because we got the market in New Orleans with that run that there. You know what I'm saying? So it was a good thing to do the bounce song, but I was totally against it. I didn't want to do it. I think, too, what helped a lot, too, that, because he made the track. He he, yeah. he he made the track, yeah. and once he laid the track, all they had to do was file it, oh, and then, like you said, B, he opened a door like, well, look, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it came out, it was a good, it was a it good, was a good, it was a good but track. But the track that Dead laid down, 
the track really, 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 right. really, really right. got us right. where we need to be at. And then as we started to lay it down and it began to develop into something special, then, you know, we was all all behind it, all behind the, you know, the project. And that would really set, like I said, that's what, like most said, that would like really set the group of juvenile up, you know, on top and mm -hmm. be truthful. When the thing came out, we were doing a little shows in Houston and Atlanta and, you know, places like that. But we were doing like little promotional shows. But I was so involved in the street that I went to jail before it even, before I could even taste the success that it did, I was in jail. So, you know, when I come home, it's all new to me. All this is still new, you know what I'm saying? Cause the things I didn't been through and things I didn't put more through from, you know, from my past aggression when I was a youngster, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't really taste the success like they did. You know, I was locked up. Then Mo got locked up. Then that's when, you know, that's why a lot of people sleeping on mobile camp. But you, we, gonna, we about to wake y'all up, believe that. We about to wake y'all up. If it wasn't for that, like like Soldier Slim, like Soldier Slim said, if it wasn't for incarceration, man, we'd have been rich. You know what I'm saying? We rich now, but I'm talking about we'll be at the level that we are uh, you know, supposed to be at. Because if you look at it, without the two halves of the root of the juvenile back then, you had an incomplete group. You know what I'm saying? And we was doing shows, Brandon was doing shows with, you know, uh, 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 uh with, yeah, with lower level. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't, it really, Mo ain't never, what I want to say, Mo ain't never had the full strength of root of the juvenile on the street at one time. So it hindered our success. And I want to tell you, you know, these young dudes out here, man, the street life, it, 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 it ain't life. You know what I mean? Man, focus on your music, your family, and people who love you. That street, they ain't got no friends, they ain't got no picks and chooses, for real. You know what I'm saying? And I, if I had to do it all that over again, Man. I look at it like this here, from what I learned. We always say the game, the dope game, the street game. But whenever you ever hear Mobo Joe say the game, it's not a game, it's real life. It's real life. Because it's not a game when you can get 99 years in a cane. Or right. you can get banged in the brain. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no we back think when this dope game, when this street game, you know what I'm saying? Like this man lost. 10 years of his young, his young life. He can't never get that back. He lost 10 years of being of, of affiliated with a successful group. He can't never get back. Right, 10 years you know what I'm saying? He can't never get that back. Family so for those who out there, thank you, no, we know. We telling you Lived what it. you don't know. You know what I'm saying? We see it every day. You see what I'm saying? And these things came back. Like right now, we got the other half of the root of the juvenile with a 50-year bid. With a fit, just got it. 50-year bid. You see what I'm saying? So now that we back and about to get what's rightfully ours and be successful, he'll never be able to enjoy it because he's going to be incarcerated. Right, it's like the you rules, it's like the rules got switched. For one simple mistake. You know, like I, I got to try to tell a lot of youngsters today, roll the whole tape. All right, you saying you going to hit this lick. You going to kick in this door, or you going to rob this bank. But roll the whole tape. If I kick in that door, what's on the other side of that door? Because I really, really want to face that. If I go rob this bank and I get caught, do I really want to do these 50 years? Right. See what I'm and see, a lot, of, a lot of youngsters will be like, man, sure, that's how I'm living. Until you get in there and you be in there 20 years and you can't come home. Yeah.